afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad, Connor Donovan on camera as Ashland post-77 battles Lowell. Post-100, Lowell is 2-1 and one on this season. Post-77 is 3-0 and oh overall. And Lowell's uh, uh, post-87. So post 87 against post 77 today on this beautiful sunny day. Temperatures are in the high 70s. Let's take a look at the Lowell lineup. Leading things off is center fielder Edgar Velasquez. Batting second is first baseman Thomas Hassett. Hitting third is third baseman Tyler Hoey. Rory Velasquez, the shortstop, is hitting cleanup. Batting fifth, catcher Johnny Donovan. Hitting sixth, DH Brendan DeMarco. Hitting seventh, left fielder Aiden Foyle. Hitting eighth, right fielder J.J. Mercury. Hitting ninth is second baseman Pat Crowley. Dom Cavanaugh on the mound for post 77 with the rest of the defense. Here is Larry Sackla. Thank you, Tom. Today's starting lineup is Ben Fink at third, Jackson Horning at shortstop, Cole Glassburn at second base, Alex Amalfi playing first base, left to right Sam Farrell, Brandon Grover, in center field, Nick Calabresi in right. Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching Dom Cavanaugh. And Dom Cavanaugh has pitched in one game this season. That was actually back against Newton in our first broadcast of the season. He went six innings in that game. Or excuse me, he actually pitched the second game. It was Owen Ward who pitched against Newton. Dom Cavanaugh pitched the second game against Natick in Natick and went six innings in that game, giving up one run, which was unearned. Four hits, one walk, and he struck out seven in what was a fantastic start. And actually, post-77 has not given up, given up an earned run all season long. As Edgar Velasquez steps in, and he'll put this one up the left side, and that is going to be a fair ball. Velasquez around first. And that's where he will stop. Took a big turn towards second, but the center fielder starts things off with a single for post 87. The field's haunted, Tom. It never changes from year to year. Field is in rough shape. That took a bad bounce for, by Ben Fink in the left field. Yeah, there's certainly some divots out there as Thomas Hassett steps in, checking at first. Velasquez slides back safely. Last time we saw Lowell, uh, they were on the winning end of uh, best two out of three to get in the uh, state finals. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. Oh, and one on Hassett. He's a returning member from last year, as well as the Velasquez boys. Checking at first, runner slides back just safe. Yeah, good amount of this Lowell team is returning from last season. They went to the state tournament. They went 0 and 2 in the states after oh, sorry about that. defeating post 77 in a very tough zone final. Up at Alumni Stadium where we just were this past Saturday. That is correct. Wide up and the pitch. That is fouled off. 0 and 2 now. I must say they do have the better field. I oh. would I would agree. <laughs> and they got a press box too. Beats our press box down here in Ashland Middle School. And these two teams switched home games. So post 77 will be in Lowell on July 11th rather than at home. I believe that's because the Lowell facility was needed for some other baseball action as that pitches up high. One and two. Dom Cavanaugh had a good season for the Ashland Clockers. Had a good uh, game against Medway in the sectional finals. That one is just outside. Post 77 has won their last two home games against Lowell. They took them down three to one last year right here at Ashland Middle School. I remember that game. That was a hard-fought battle. 
Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. There is out number one. That'll bring up Tyler Hoey, the third baseman. That was way out of the strike zone, but Hassett just couldn't lay off of it. Velasquez seems to be in uh, Dom's head a little bit. He's worried about Velasquez taking off. Wind up in the pitch inside. One and oh. Runner on first, one out for post 87 of Lowell. Dom Cavanaugh had a uh, seven and two thirds scoreless inning game against Sandwich at the uh, state sectional finals. Inside. Semi semifinals, excuse me. Runner with a bit of a lead at first. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike, check in at first, and the runner slides back just safe. Pretty good pick attempt there by Jouette. A little dangerous. But Sean Jewett loves to throw down. Cavanaugh had a 218 ERA at Ashland High School this year. This is up the right side, picked up by Glasper and throw to first. They get the out, four to three on Hoey. Velasquez advancing to second, two away. Rory Velasquez, the shortstop, will step in. Kavanaugh went five and two overall for Ashland High School this season. 218 ERA, made 10 appearances as Jouette will have a little conversation. Him and Alex Amalfe were one, two out of their stable of pitchers. Pretty good twosome. Certainly is, and Kavanaugh will return next year. Was junior this year. Amalfe was a senior this year. So Kavanaugh will likely have the lead role for the Clockers as that pitch is up high. Alex Amalfi heading to UMass Boston. Time His called by the mate. hitter. Oh, sorry. His battery mate, Sean Jewett, is uh, going to attempt to walk on at Stonehill. That pitch. Just low, so that'll make the count three and one. Time called. Well, Kavanaugh taking a bit of time, keeping an eye on that runner over at second base. That forced Velasquez to call time. Well, he is the leadoff hitter, so got to have something. And this is a fair ball grab by the third baseman. The throw over, got him. Ben Fink making the five to three out and that'll wrap up the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion post 77 baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Set for the bottom of the first inning post 77 coming up to the plate let's take a look at the Ashland post 77 lineup as they are set to face Tim Scott pitching for Lowell leading things off is the left fielder Sam Farrell the center fielder Brendan Grover will bat second Jackson Hornung the shortstop hitting third Dom Cavanaugh the pitcher in the cleanup spot Sean Jouette the catcher hitting fifth Alex Amalfi the first baseman hitting sixth Cole Glasper in the second baseman hitting seventh. Ben Fink, the third baseman hitting eighth. And Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, hitting ninth. For three and O oh, post 77. And now for the low post 87 defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Thanks, Tom. Tyler Hoey's playing third base today. Rory Velasquez is the shortstop. Pat Crowley at second base. Tom at Hassett at first base, left to right. Aiden Foley. Edgar Velasquez, J.J. Mercury. That's a great baseball name. Behind the plate tonight is Johnny Donovan catching Tim Scott.
Set to step in is Sam Farrell, the left fielder of four post 77. To face Tim Scott. And the leadoff man will take ball one on the first pitch. One and oh. Farrell, a junior out of Holliston, as this is up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, and the lead man on for post 77. Brennan C and I single for Farrell. Brennan Grover, the center fielder, will step in. Farrell did not have a hit coming into today's game. He was 0 for 10 at the plate, so that's his first hit of the season. Oh, well, he's got the monkey off his bat. Let's see what he does with his base running. And Post 77 did participate in a tournament this past weekend. We are not including those stats. We're only including the zone five stats. So we're not including the hits and we're not including the errors? Is that what we're not doing? That's right. Okay. That one is in there for a strike, one and one. Oh, we got to include a Malfi's no hitter in there, don't we? Nope. No. Sorry, Alex. Zone five games, that's all that matters <laughs> at this point. <laughs> And that is up the right side, foul. One and two. Brennan Grover hitting a 455 this season. Five, four, 11. Runner with a bit of a lead at first. Line up and the pitch. Breaking pitch outside. Here's a tidbit for you. He was at a showcase out at UMass Amherst this weekend. His exit velocity for his bat speed was 93, and his throwing velocity from the outfield was 93. There's a called strike, and that'll do it for Brandon Grover, one away. Jackson Hornung will step in, the shortstop. 93 is gas. They must have been pretty impressed. Hornung is hitting a 636 on the season, 7 for 11. There's a strike. Scott not to throw, not afraid to throw his big breaking stuff. He's thrown two straight good looking curveballs. Runner taking off from first and it hit him. So Hornung will get the free pass to first base. Farrell up to second, Dom Cavanaugh to the plate. Jackson's got this way of showing his derriere a little bit and uh, he'll get on any way he can. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Steve Watson will also be joining us later in the broadcast. Connor Donovan on camera. Ashland Legion Baseball and WACA TV in Ashland and H. Cam and Hopkinton as this is up the left side. Past the shortstop, lead runner being waved around. Here comes Farrell, he'll score and it's a one nothing lead for post 77. An RBI single for Dom Cavanaugh. Once again, the poor field conditions come into play. That should have been an easy uh, easy ball for Velasquez to handle, but it just scooted by him. Sean Jouett will step in with runners on first and third, one out. As the head coach for Lowell will have a discussion with his pitcher. See if Coach Obid can pick up any uh, anything from the catcher and the pitcher in terms of their sequencing of pitches, because his breaking ball is a slow roller. And Farrell would have had that base stolen easily had Hornung not got hit by a pitch. Jouette has hit well so far this season. Takes a breaking pitch for strike one there. Jouette so far on the year, hitting a 667, 649 at the plate. Checking at first, and that was close, but the runner back just safe. Jake Obit has shown us early on he's going to play aggressive baseball. Kavanaugh once again taking a lead. He's going to take off this time, and the throw up is not going to be in time. A little bit of a delay there from the catcher, Johnny Donovan, getting the throw up. And Kavanaugh has the stolen bag. Seemed as though he double clutched it. He's waiting to see what Hornung 
was going to do, whether he's going to take off, but let it rip down to second base. Made it closer than he should have been. Oh, there's a hit batsman. Second hit batsman of the game. And that'll load up the bases for post 77. Alex Amalfi, the first baseman, will step in. So a little bit of a trouble here for Tim Scott, keeping his control. Alex Amalfi hitting a 667 on the season, four for six at the plate. Nine plate appearances. And that's going to get by the catcher. Here comes Horning to try to score. The throw is going to be off the mark. It's 2-0. And now Kavanaugh going to come around to try to score, and he will easily. 3-0, post 77. Two runs come around to score on a very wild pitch. Well, Dom Kavanaugh just didn't stop. He went wheeling around the bases as soon as Donovan missed the throw to the pitcher. And uh, <laughs> they are aggressive on the base pass, Tom. And it pays off there, Jouette up to second. And there's still only one out in this inning. Scott set to deal, looks at second and delivers. Fouled away. One and two. Scott relying a lot on his breaking stuff. Well, it's not very often you see two runs score on a wild pitch. No, <laughs> hardly. But uh, it's heads up baseball by Tom Cavanaugh. Looks like Lowell is going to have some warm up action. That pitch up high. Two and two. Allegedly, they have a pitcher that went to Quinnipiac this year, but he's been told to sort of go easy. And the pitcher threatens to throw to second. Jouette back. Alex Amalfi was a senior at Ashland High School this season. Fouls that one away. He outdueled Brendan Kelly in their game this year. Three to one victory at Hopkinton. He has certainly been a very good asset for the clockers. Play club ball for the Nakona baseball team. Wind up and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one up the middle. Takes a couple hops. Could be difficult. Throw over. And it is in time, just in time, to get Elmalfi. Jouet pushed up to third. And that was a nice throw there by the shortstop, Rory Velasquez. Two away. Cole Glassburn will step in. The Hopkinton Hiller making his first appearance in a Zone 5 game this year after going all the way to the state finals with the Hillers. First pitch fouled away. He's heading to Catholic University next year to be a Cardinal. Going to take up architecture of all things. We'll get a piece of this one up the right side, foul. Got gap power, not home run power, but he'll hit a gap. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, good block by the catcher. Glassburn last season hit only a 195 for post 77. Yeah, not, not very good. Hoping to do a bit better this year. There's a called strike, and that'll do it for the bottom of the first. But post 77 plates three runs, and they lead it three to nothing as we head to the top of the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, five, six, and seven due up for Lowell post 87. Johnny Donovan, the catcher, Brandon DeMarco, the DH, and Aiden Foyle, the left fielder. A three nothing lead for Ashland. Three runs scoring in the bottom of the first. We'll recap that inning momentarily as Tom Cavanaugh set to deal. Ball one. Well, in the bottom of the first, it all started with a Sam Farrell single. Brendan Grover then struck out. Jackson Hornung 
then was hit by a pitch. And then Dom Kavanaugh singled to drive in a run. And then a wild pitch allowed two runs to score. And there were your three runs, four post 77. That's fouled away, two and one. Did you score one of those in error for uh, Velasquez, or was that a base hit? I'd say there was an error in there. Okay. Dominic Cavanaugh throws three quarters, then he drops down a little bit to the side. Must be a little confusing for the hitters. Up high. Cavanaugh deals. Oh, you gotta give it to him, Ump. That looked good. Well, Yump didn't like it, so that'll make it three and two. Dominic's all stretched out, so we've got nothing to worry about as far as pitch count is concerned. And this is up the middle, past the reach of Cavanaugh. Very slow roller, and no play will be made. An infield single for Donovan. I'll bring up Brendan DeMarco, the DH. Grass hasn't been cut in some time, kind of thick and slow. Donovan doesn't look like he's a, a threat to steal. Wind up in the pitch, and that hit him. Ouch. Little inside heat there. That'll put two on with no outs. Aiden Foyle, the left fielder, will step in. Did that get him on the dome, Tom? It did, right off the helmet. That's why they have helmets. Is, is it now? Injury. <laughs> is that the whole purpose? I understood that. I know that. I know it firsthand. Aiden Foyle, a five foot 10, 180 pound righty. what Lowell will do here, whether they'll sacrifice and try to move the runners over. Lined up and the pitch, fouled away. The umpire says he's out of ammunition. That means he wants some more balls. There's been a good amount of foul balls so far in this one. Never heard an umpire say I'm out of ammo. It's I like first. it. I like it. Yeah, I kind of like it. Straight, right to the point. <laughs> He's out of bullets. Okay. Well, there didn't appear to be any sacrifice going on there, Tom. They were hitting away early on in the game. Kavanaugh working from the stretch. Two on, no outs. Set to deal. In there for a strike. Grab the inner corner. Oh, and two. Wind up and the pitch. And this is a fair ball up the left side. Picked up by Finkel. Tag third for one. So he'll get the force out. Foyle reaches on the five unassisted force out. They'll bring up J.J. Mercury, the right fielder. And that's going to get by Jouette. That's a rare scene. Both runners will advance. You gotta give Sean a uh, pass ball yeah, on that. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Kavanaugh set to deal. There's a strike. Uh, I think he called that one a ball. Looked inside. Oh, did he? All right, yeah. inside. He's not very uh, vocal. This fella here. Apparently not. Except when he's out of ammo. He has those 
hand signals that could be a little confusing. Three and O is the count on Mercury. First base open. Dominic might want to be careful with JJ Mercury. There's a walk. Bases loaded now for post 87 with one out. Pat Crowley, the second baseman, will step in. We got media. We got lots of media tonight, Tom. Certainly do. Big zone five matchup here. We don't have any international viewers, but. There's strike one to the second baseman. Dominic pitching out of the full windup. Well, this was your zone finals last year. These two teams, from what I heard, a very good chance that could happen again. That one's fouled away, 0-2. Kavanaugh set for the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, out number two. That'll bring up Edgar Velasquez. Bases remain loaded for post 87. That was a ball all the way out of his hand. So he tended to waste that pitch up on the count 0-2. Velasquez singled last inning. It was a tough chance for Fink. Right down the line at third, but it's awful choppy down there. Steve Watson's in the house. That's right. <laughs> it's a strike. Oh, and one. Dominic's been throwing mostly fastballs. That was a little bit of his off-speed stuff. Down low, and Jouette able to keep it in front of him. We're gonna get this squared away right now. Are we gonna do Jewett or Jouette? I say Jewett, because that's, <laughs> phonetically, that's I, what it is. I thought we were saying the same thing. No, 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 no. Do this every year. <laughs> we'll have to ask him what he prefers. All right, we'll do that. But he's not going to Canada this year on his uh, family vacation. He decided to stick it out with the team. That's a good sport right there. Two and one. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Horning throws the first. Got him. Six to three for out number three. And we will head to the bottom of the second, post 77, with a 3 0 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, 8 9 and 1 due up for post 77. Ben Fink, Nick Calabrese, and Sam Farrell. A 3 0 lead for post 77. Tim Scott remains in the game. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Oh, and one. Cole Glassburn got caught looking in the bottom of the first inning. They look like they're going to be aggressive with Scott. Set to deliver. Up high, one and one. There's a strike. There's that looping, breaking pitch that base runners ought to try and pick up and take advantage of. Inside there. It's already hit two guys, right, Tom? That's right. A couple hit batters in the first inning. Well, Tom got one back, I think. So it's two to one. 
And this is up the middle right back to Scott and he'll flip to first for the out. Nearly dropped. One to three on the out. Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, will step in. So Good looking player, that Calabrese. So far, 286 on the season, two for seven at the plate. A heads up on a sliced foul ball, Tom. Takes ball one there. No help for me over here. No help. And that is sliced foul, one and one. Well. <laughs> Take a look at the Zone 5 standings in just a moment. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air foul, one and two. In Zone 5, it's Hudson with a four and one record. Ashland three and oh, Natick three and two. Lowell two and one, North Chelmsford two and three. Medford one and three. Newton one and four. Waltham one and three, that pitch high and inside. And Bill Ricca one and one. Newton's one and four? Yep. They're a horrible, horrible ball club. They came in here and got trounced. They didn't, mercy. Very young team this year. Well, they're just gonna be like Sudbury. And this is hit in the air, foul territory, and no one can get to it. Count remains two and two. I got a feeling Newton will meet its demise and not be in zone five next year. That's my hunch. Hopefully not, we've had quite a few of those lately. I'll have to have a merger. And this is up the right side. Takes a couple awkward hops. Picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first. They get the out. Four to three. Four out number two. Sam Farrell. The left fielder will step in. Farrell had a single to start off the game. They start off the bottom of the first. Four post 77. Scott's retired the first two men he's faced this inning. Looking to go un, deux, trois. That'd be French for one, two, three, Tom. Wind up and the pitch. That hit him. His third hitter, hit, batman of the, hit batsman of the game. I wonder if we'll start seeing warnings if this keeps up. <laughs> and we'll bring up Brendan Grover. Wasn't like he threw his heater. He's clearly an intentional. Farrell did take off earlier. Grover was at the plate. Upstairs. One and oh. Grover struck out in his last at bat. Checking at first, runner back safe. Pretty good pickoff move from Tim Scott. Up high. Tim Scott is a six foot, 150 pound righty. Put him in the lanky category. Graduated Lowell High School this year. Checking at first, runner back safe. Got a very short, compact pickoff move. You don't want to have a long, long armed move. Too easy for the base runner to read. And this is hit high in the air to right field and caught by the center fielder who ranges to his left for the final out of the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. Post 77, leading Lowell three to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, due up for Lowell post 87, two, three, and four. Thomas Hassett, Tyler Hoey, Rory Velasquez to face Tom Cavanaugh, who's going into his third inning of work. So far, he's given up no runs, two hits. He's walked a couple. Hassett went down by K, I think, the last time he faced Tom in the first inning. Wind up and the pitch. A little bit high there, one and oh. Post 77 has a good amount of away games coming up. And then they'll be home for most of July. 
And we'll have a number of those games for you live right here as that is fouled away. One and one. Pretty good effort there by Farrell to try to get to it. Lousy throw in. But Kavanaugh's got that three quarter and dips down slightly to the side. So that's going to be a little confusing for the hitters. A little deception. Other games going on in zone five tonight. North Chelmsford at Medford. That came with a 545 start. And Hudson at Waltham. 7 p.m. start for that one. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped into center field. That'll drop down for a base hit. So the lead runner on for the third straight time, four post 87. And now Tyler Hoey will step in. Line up and the pitch. Down low. Hoey is grounded out in his only plate appearance. Takes ball two. Has it with a slight lead at first. Kavanaugh deals. This is up the middle, takes an awkward hop. Horning to second, now to first, and they'll get both. Six, four, three, double play. Rory Velasquez, the shortstop, will step in. How about Jackson Hornung? Yeah, well, Cole Glassburn turned that one nicely with Hassett bearing down on him. It certainly did. Twin killing, do they call it? Lasco has grounded out in his only plate appearance. There's a strike. I don't think so, but you gotta have that one. Did he raised his right hand? Well, Look like I, it. I don't know if he did or not. Look like it was a strike I'm torn right now. <laughs> I think it should have been. Well, let's see what happens. That is a ball. Sure about that? We believe the count is one and one. Velasquez boys were trouble last year in the uh, best two out of three, especially that last game. Oof, and hit batter. That's why he just got hit because they were trouble last year. So two outs, runner on first. Johnny Donovan, the catcher, will step in. So the hit batsmen are three to two, Lowell. Yeah, there's been quite a few this game on both sides. And oh. that wasn't a looping curveball. That was a that was a heater. Donovan singled to start off the second inning. Checking at first, runner back just safe. Just a little subtlety when uh, Dom Kavanaugh comes to the set and he doesn't want to throw over, he stops at the chin. Here he stops at the chin. Down low. When he wants to pick over, it seems like he stops at the belt. You do have to stop just for a tenth of a second or it's a balk. Runner taking off from first, and that hit the batter. That's and the umpire, I think, wanted to check on him, make sure he's okay. He's going to give a warning, I think. Yeah, the umpire, I think, uh, probably having a couple words with Kavanaugh and giving him a new ball. Brandon DeMarco will step in, and now Coach Obid wants a word. That was up high. That's the second time he went dome high. Let's bring in our uh, rules expert, and he's also an umpire. Steve, when would you administer a warning for hitting a batter? I think we're reaching that point. Well, I think the score is, what, 3-3 uh, three, three in terms of hit batsman when yep. the third inning sets six. 
in less than two and a half innings. I think that's kind of bordering on insane right there. Two in the head, so, though. Yeah, it, I don't think it's anything intentional, but certainly something that's worth watching. But at the same time, you don't want to issue a warning too soon. Right. You know, you want to do it if it's warranted. I think we're getting there. Yeah, none of them have looked intentional, but certainly uh, <laughs> a good amount of hit batsmen in this game. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. You probably would see one if there was some chirping back and forth between the two dugouts, but there hasn't been that. Speaking Certainly not with Scott's, which have been, you know, the little looping breaking ball hit you on the derriere type, but Kavanaugh's have been up in the head area. Brendan DeMarco was hit by a pitch in the second inning. And Kavanaugh threatening, threatening to throw the second runner back. Velasquez brothers are certainly in Dom's head. And now Jouette wants a word with Kavanaugh. Runners on first and second, two outs. Brendan DeMarco at the plate. Some words Another of factor, a uh, Lowell coach hasn't uh, complained about the beanings. So everything's cool, I think. I think so. Just some wild pitches. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. Kavanaugh set to deal. Hit high in the air over to left field and it is caught by a hustling Sam Farrell for the third and final out of the inning. To the bottom of the third we go. It's post 77 leading Lowell three to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning. Jackson Hornung to start things off. Tim Scott remains in the game for Lowell. Three, four, and five do up for post 77. Jackson Hornung, Don Cavanaugh, and Sean Jouett. Line up and the pitch. Whoa, foul right towards us, 0 and 1. Hot shot. That's why you gotta pay attention. Warning <laughs> trying to take us out. That thing was a screamer. <laughs> We're gonna have to give Larry a glove. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, and he's safe. It pulled the first baseman off the bag. So Hornung reaches on the error. Steve, is that an error? I think he would have been safe regardless. So I would rule that a hit. I think the throw pulled the first baseman off. I'll, I'll give him a hit. So I, I guess I'm outruled two to one here. <laughs> but Velasquez is not his home field, so he has a tough time reading that ball. Kavanaugh steps in and takes ball one. Briefly got away from Johnny Donovan, the catcher, but he's able to regroup. Quickly. Look for Jackson Horning to run on Scott. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking pitch up high. Horning with a bit of a lead. There's a strike. Two and one. Well, Steve, I must say, this umpire has been doing a good job, pretty consistent strike zone. That's exactly what you want. As a player, you want to know what to expect. Checking at first, runner back safe. Not a fan, though, how he turns to his right sometimes on a ball, and it almost looks like he's sticking out his arm. Not a fan of that. Well, you know, that's because <laughs> he's trying to fool you, Tom. That's right, that's right. <laughs> he's trying to throw off the broadcasters. <laughs> it's all part of the plan, right? That's right. Warning with a significant lead at first. And he's taking off. The pitch was high. The throw to second is high, and Hornung safe. So Hornung with the stolen bag. Well, his uh, college coach will like that. He's going to Skidmore College, the home of the thoroughbreds. He looked like a thoroughbred on that one. 
I have, I got to agree with that. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Like. Well, Skidmore College is out of Saratoga, Saratoga Springs. This is hit in the air, left field towards the wall and caught by Foyle. And now trying to advance to third is Hornung, and he will. So Kavanaugh flies out, but it allows Horning to advance. And with one out, runner on third, Sean Jouette will step in, the catcher. Jouette was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. There's a strike. Leg lift and the pitch. Down low. Johnny Donovan making the stop behind the plate. Juetta, 667 batting average heading into this game. 649 at the plate. And he'll check swing foul that one. That he did not mean to do that. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. That was a pardon me swing. One and two. Sean went five for five for one of the games they played over the weekend in that tournament in Rhode Island. The Shamrock Classic Tournament. This is up the left side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first, they got him, but it's a sacrifice RBI for Sean Jouette. Jackson Horton comes around to score the fourth post-77 run of the evening. Nice play by Hoey at third base. That's, that's a danger zone at third base hot corner. Ben Fink had a tough play himself over there in the first inning. Alex Amelfi, the first baseman, will step in. Inside. That was a great grab right there. They were playing four play at home, but obviously when, when the ball is right there on the line, deep in the hole, you have no play at home. Take the out. Absolutely. Get what you can get. One and one. That bender that Scott throws seems to freeze the 77 hitters. Gets a piece of this one over to left field. Could be trouble, but no. Foil able to get there and make the catch. But post 77 plates another run, and they lead Lowell 4 to nothing, heading to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for a little post 87. Aiden Foyle, JJ Mercury, and Pat Crowley to face Dom Cavanaugh, who has pitched a pretty good game so far. He's given up no runs, three hits, a couple of walks. He's hit a couple of batters, but none of that has cost post 77 anything. And they lead it four to nothing. And what I would say is Pretty crucial game with Lowell Post 87 here early in the season. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, a little chin music there. You know, Thomas, never too early for a crucial game. It certainly isn't. Never too early, of course. We all know that Lowell knocked Post 77 out last year, so perhaps a little bit of revenge on their minds. Leg lift and the pitch, fouled away. One and one. Yeah, Steve, uh, Tom and I were up uh, at the Lowell Alumni Stadium in the press box this past Saturday, and they haven't cleaned the windows since uh, we were last <laughs> up there last, last summer. Calling me shocked. <laughs> well, Tom took the side of the press box where there was no window. I got the opaque one. Well, of course he did. Did you, did, did you expect him not to? Well, and he's been now uh, overruled because I went and uh, asked the coaching staff, is it Jewett or Jewett? And it's Jewett. That's what I've been saying. This is hit in the air over to center field, and it's caught one away. <laughs> You're having a tough day, Tom. J.J. Mercury will step in. Mercury walked in his only plate appearance back in the second inning. Well, Maybe Dom Cavanaugh have a clean Larry, inning. The play-by-play -play guy always gets first pick at the press box spot. So, all right, I guess you're right. But at Campanelli Stadium, 
You get the higher pitch. In Brockton, though. that was that was a great press box. Oh, and one on Mercury. And they serve way better food at Campanelli Stadium. I don't think they had any food in Wool. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they didn't clean the windows. They didn't have any refreshments. For a state championship game, no less. One and two. And I'm pretty sure one working bathroom, you said, right? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's a joke. Good crowd, though. And a nice field. Hit in the air, right side, and caught by Amalfi. Two away. Looked like it was going to be out of play. I'll bring up Pat Crowley, the second baseman. Are they saying it was out of play? Uh, looks like they are. That is J.J. Mercury still at the plate, so that was out of the field of play. So that'll be ruled a foul ball, but Coach Obid is out to argue. I think they're arguing that it's probably a straight line from the end of the uh, fence uh, heading towards the outfield is where the out-of-play zone would be. That's my guess would generally was what the ground rules are. Well, it looks like for the moment Mercury's going to stay in the batter's box, and he will. So it was a foul ball. So the count's one and two. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. And that's exactly why it's really important to have all that stuff covered in ground rules. Absolutely. That's why it's so important. I know a lot of people think ground rules are just run of the mill, but sometimes they're not. Really important stuff. It's not like Alex could have jumped in the seats over there since there are none, but. Upstairs. Both umpires agreed. Set for the 2-2 pitch. Inside. A little tight, a little tight. That'll fill it up. Two outs, no one on. Full count on the ninth hitter in the lineup, Pat Crowley. You don't want to lose the nine guy. Swing and a miss. And there's strike number three. Little Excuse me, that, that was huh? J.J. Mercury, that's right. I still had the fly out down on my score sheet. So that's out number two. That was Mercury, who we thought flew out, but the ball was out of play. Pat Crowley will step in. Two outs in the inning. Dominic reared back and fired. So, so far, fly out to center field and a strikeout for Lowell and ball one to Pat Crowley. He's having a tough time with his breaking pitch today. Certainly seems to have the velocity, however. There's a strike. One and one. Leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss, one and two. Sound effects provided by Sean Jewett's catcher's mitt. Down low. Two and two now on Crowley. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away, count remains two and two. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is right back to Kavanaugh. Throw to first, no problem. One to three for out number three to the bottom of the fourth we go. Post 77 leading Lowell, four to nothing. 
on either WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. It's the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning, 7, 8, and 9, due up for post 77. Cole Glasper and Ben Fink and Nick Calabrese. And this is popped up over to the second baseman who will easily make the catch. One pitch, one out. Alex Amalfi taking some warm-up tosses in the Ashland 77 bullpen. Ben Fink will step in. Fink has grounded out so far today. And I believe that was a ball. My view was partially blocked. <laughs> I mean, could you tell the players not to run in front of the camera, Tom? I might have to. There's a strike, one and one. Tim Scott still out there for Lowell. Up high. Two and one. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call. Connor Donovan on camera. Swing and a miss there. Two and two. Set to deliver. Down low, that'll fill up the count. Ben Fink heading to Bloomington, Indiana, to the University of Indiana. Been on that campus, pretty nice, except for all the corn on the way down. And that's fouled away. Count remains full. No mountains down there, Tom, if you're curious about that. Ben will be not be doing a skiing in Indiana. That pitch up high and he draws the walk. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. So one out, one on, four post 77. There's a butt, slow roller up the middle, picked up, throw to first in time. Just in time, that was close. Jake Obit doesn't like that, but it was very nice drag bunt. Certainly was. Sam Farrell will step in. Yeah, that was a great butt right there, very close, but I think he got him at first. I concur. I think so. Farrell is one for one today with a run scored and was hit by a pitch. Down low. So it's runner on second with two outs, four post 77. And that's the proper way to butt. You don't want to be like Max Scherzer, bunted and followed off your face, right? <laughs> He's got a good looking eye right now. <laughs> oh, he sure does. He pitched the next day too. Well, inside. He's a gamer. He is. Two and oh. Like left hand, the pitch fouled away. Two and one. Sam Farrell, a junior, at, was a junior at Holliston High School this year. He got promoted, so he'll be a senior next year. That's right. Yeah. Well, hopefully he did. Generally, what happens? <laughs> Generally. Generally speaking. Down low. That Downstairs. Was didn't happen for you a couple times though, did no, it? No, I got held back. <laughs> Larry just graduated a few years ago. Just a few. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, shin music, and that'll be a walk for Sam Farrell. Two on, two outs. Brennan Grover will step in. So Steve, it, none of the hit batters seem to be intentional but is there a certain number or a certain amount of inside pitches like that that you say, okay, guys, enough throwing inside? Well, I think we're at the threshold, but you need to keep in mind these are two very good teams. I think they're trying to make smart pitches and pitch inside. And the biggest thing for, for, for me as an umpire, at least, that there's been no chirping back and forth. Umpires don't want to hear that stuff. That's right. So the fact that there's been none of that, I think that's why you have not seen a warning. At least that's my opinion. That's how I would handle it. I agree. 
That's fouled away, one and one now on Grover. The double steal put on by Jake Obed. Runners on first and second, two outs. I think Jake's hoping for a catch him on a breaking pitch. You're giving it away. Coach Obed signs now as that pitch is inside, two and one. Well, maybe see something the catcher's doing. Or maybe he sees fastball, fastball, curveball, some type of sequence. Checking at second runner back just safe. It was a good throw from Scott. That was right in front of the runner, Ben Fink. Decent inside move. And they did put the play on because Velasquez was right there. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Two and two on Grover. Looks like Scott, if he wants to, can reach back and get a little extra. But he's certainly not overpowering. Leg lift and the pitch, fouled away. Grover just getting a piece of that one. Grover 0 for 2 so far today. He was a junior over at Ashland. And that pitch was down low, runner taking off, and it'll go into left field. Here comes Ben Fink around to score. It's 5-0, post 77. Fink scores on the error. So he stole third and then scored on the error, or advanced the third on the pass ball and scores on the air and throw. The Hassett should have just eaten that ball, stuck a fork in it, and saved himself some grief. Yeah, that was not a throw to be proud of right there. It certainly wasn't. Just, it was bad, not accurate, very low. You know, in that case, you're asking the third baseman to do a lot of work on that. Farrell is up to third. And this is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down. Sam Farrell will cross home plate. And Brennan Grover still marching up towards second. It's an RBI double. He's got some wheels like Brandon Grover. So two more runs, four post 77 so far in this bottom of the fourth inning. We gotta get a change. Jackson Horning set to step in. And yeah, we very well may have a new pitcher here, but he hasn't taken the ball yet. So looks like Scott may, may stay out there. Well, he's gonna have to beg for his dinner so there. We will indeed have a pitching change for Lowell post 87, Jackson Horning will Step in next, and we'll let you know who the new pitcher is. When we come back, you are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton, as well as HCAT in Halston. Jackson Horning stepping in to face the new pitcher, Brooke Paree. Tim Scott, the starter, went three and two-thirds of an inning, giving up two walks, three hit batters, six runs, three of which were earned. That pitch is down low to Horning. Two outs in the inning, a runner on second, four post 77. Two more runs have scored. It's a six nothing lead for Ashland. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. One and one on Hornung, who so far today has been hit by a pitch, reached on an error, has stolen a base and scored two runs. Scored on a wild pitch back in the first inning. Then on a sacrifice RBI ground out by Sean Jewett. There's a strike. Paris, a 2019 graduate of Lowell High. Red Raiders. Leg lift and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one past the dive of the third baseman. Lead runner is going to try to score. Here comes Brendan Grover, and he will score an RBI single for Jackson Hornung. Not for nothing, Steve, but this infield is, uh, I'll, I'll just be nice. It's horrible. <laughs> a 7-0 lead, four post 77. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. 
Yeah, it is a little slanted if you squat down and look from third going to second. You can see exactly what you're talking about. Down low. It's a home field advantage for Ashland. No, no question about that. You know the sad part, Larry? This is not the worst I've seen. Far from it. Is there a worse field? Yes. Oh, oh much worse. The Vale Field in Northbridge. Well, anything in Northbridge is bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Second half first runner was back safe. I don't even think they got a dunk of donuts in Northbridge. Brooke Parry working from the stretch. Runner taking off. This is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down for a hit. And now being waved around is Hornung here. He comes and he will score. It's going to be an RBI double for Dom Cavanaugh. Post 77 on a rally. An 8 0 lead now for Ashland. Well, I think they've outscored their opponents by like 100 to 100 to 1 so far. Pretty darn close. I don't know. They're just murderers row. Sean Jewett steps in. 27 Yankees, right, St right Steve? That's right. Murderers row. Murderers <laughs> row. That pitch was inside. Post 77 has scored 33 runs heading into this game, and that was only th through three games. Bet the over, like I said last week when we were here. Fouled away, one and one. Well, now they've scored 41 in four games. That's a pretty solid average right there, right? Eh? I would say so. Yeah, Sean Jewett uh, swings it right there. He wants to add to the hit parade. Pretty significant lead at second by Kavanaugh in there for a strike, one and two. Two outs in the inning. Three of the four runs that have scored in this inning have been with two outs. That's fouled off. Count remains one and two. For those at home, Steve, that are not familiar with American Legion baseball rules, what is the mercy rule? It varies by zone, but here it is 12 after four and a half or five, depending if the home team is up or down. In most zones it is 10, but here it's 12. And this is hit in the air over to left center. That'll get down. Here comes Kavanaugh to score, and he will score easily. And it's going to be an RBI double for Sean Jewett. Nine nothing post 77. I don't know. He's an after June hitter. His batting average after he gets out of high school is, I don't know, three times what it is at high school. I don't know. Post 77 has batted around. Alex Amalfi set to step in. What did he hit? 220 in high school this year or something? Yeah, I'll get you that number in just a moment. Got to dig through my database here. Well, well I can tell you one thing. You're uh, the stat man. <laughs> last season, he hit a 347 for post 77. As far as his. High school batting average, he hit a 224. That was off by a point. So perhaps you're right. Maybe he's just a June, July type of hitter. Alex Amalfi set to step in for the third time in this game. He's 0 for 2 so far, hoping to change that and keep this fourth inning rally going. Five more runs have come around for post 77. And it's a 9-0 lead. There's a strike. Oh, and one on Amalfi. Set to deal. Fouled away. Brooke Paré, the second pitcher of the game. For Lowell, having some trouble with this post-77 lineup. Since he's come in, he's given up three hits and two runs. And this is hit up the left side. That's a fair ball being waved around is Jewett. Here he comes to score. It's 10-0 post-77, an RBI double for Alex Amalfi. The Thundersticks have come out. That's his second straight hard hit ball. That thing was ripped, Tom. Certainly was. And that was fair by maybe an inch. Great call by the home plate umpire, though. It is his job to grab that. 
Do you see some chalk? Nope, no chalk. Cole Glassburn steps in. I don't know if there is chalk going very all the way up the yeah. Very expensive. What chalk? That's fouled off. 0 oh, and 1. Oh, that ball's gone. Well, post 77 putting on a show here in this fourth inning. They have played it six more runs. It's now a 10 nothing lead. Five straight hits. Swing and a miss there, 0 and 2. Glassburn looking for his first hit of the Legion season in zone five play. Hit over 400 in high school this year. And he'll strike out, it got away from the catcher. The throw up is not a problem. So that will end the bottom of the fourth, but not before six more runs come around to score for post 77. They lead it 10 to nothing as we head to the top of the fifth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, a 10 nothing lead for Ashland post 77. Six more runs come around to score last inning. And things certainly looking good for Ashland. Top of the order for Lowell. Edgar Velasquez will start things off. Dom Cavanaugh remains in the game. And he has pitched pretty well so far today. And this is going to take a couple hops up the left side. Picked up by Horning. Throw to first. And he got him. Six to three for out number one. A nice job by Hornung staying with it. Great scoop over there. Well, that's home cooking. Alex Amalfi knows the field. So does Hornung. Thomas Hassett will step in. Leg left and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it is past the reach of Farrell. Hassett on his way to second and he's aboard with a stand-up double. That'll bring up Tyler Hoey, one out, one on. You know what impressed me, Tom and Steve, is I came down for a little solitude at 4 p.m. this afternoon, hour and 45 minutes before game, and they were already out here shagging fly balls and taking some BP. They really made a commitment to Jake Obed. They're not messing around. They certainly aren't. They're on a mission this year. I think they're uh, really looking forward to making a deep run. Airstrike two to Hoey, O and two. Kavanaugh from the stretch with a runner on second, looks at second and deals. This is up the right side, foul. Well, we'll try to recap last inning for you. <laughs> it was a whole lot of hitting for post 77. Started with a Cole Glassburn fly up and Fink then walked, a ground out by Calabrese. Sam Farrell then walked, then a double by Brennan Grover, an RBI single by Hornung, and a, then a double by Kavanaugh scored another run. And Jewett got in there with an RBI double of his own, and Alex Amalfi with an RBI double. That pitch down low. The post-77 lineup coming alive. Coming into this game, they were hitting as a team a 407. That might go up after today. Wind up and the pitch. Ooh, that hit him. And the umpire checking on Hoey. That's his fourth hit bat, then, right? Four and three make seven today. The umpire coming out to give Kavanaugh a ball and some words there. What do you think he said, Steve? You think he said, hey, careful? Yeah, because he has it three up high now. And the last thing you want to see is a guy get conked off the dome and get knocked unconscious, you know. Especially in a game that's so lopsided at this point, you know. You don't want to see that. So not a warning, just maybe a friendly reminder. That's all. But like you said, Steve, there's no chirping. There's no, no. Uh, wear it or, you know, any of that type of, I don't want to say BS, but stuff coming out of the dugout. Yeah, and if there was, then you'd see a warning. Hit in the air, and the infield fly rule in effect, it's caught. Two away, that'll bring up Johnny Donovan, the catcher. So Dominic Cavanaugh gives a little tell. 
he comes to the set, if he's not going to go pick off, he stops at the chin. If he's going to go and do a move, he stops at the belt. Time called. The uh, umpire wants to clean off home plate. Two outs, two on for post 87 of Lowell. So what's the rule, Steve? A nanosecond stop? Uh, it really depends on the natural motion. So it should be one. Nearly got the runner at second there. Yeah, it should be one fluid motion. Of course, it's going to vary from umpire to umpire. There's some umpires who are very picky about that stuff. And then you have umpires like me who are not very picky at all. Well, you can't bounce it. You've got to come to a stop. Right? And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass. Picked up by Horn. Throw to first. Not a problem. He makes it look so easy. Six to three for out number three. To the bottom of the fifth we go. Ashland leading Lowell 10 to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, Ben Fink stepping in for post 77. Third pitcher of the day for Lowell post 87, Brian Callery on the mound. And this is ripped into left field, and it's off the left fielder's glove. Fink going to round first, heading over to second, and he's aboard. And that is certainly a hard hit ball by Ben Fink. I don't know, Steve, I'm giving him the double, I think. Ooh, that, 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 that's a tough call. He should have had that. It did bounce, looks like, off his arm. Because of that, he should have had it. I'm going to go with an E7 on that. All right. I'll Sorry, give, Ben Fink. I'll, I'll give him the hometown discount. <laughs> Nick Calabrese How will kind step of you, Tom? <laughs> that pitch inside, 1 and 0. Oh. So an 8 nothing lead, or excuse me, a 10 nothing lead for post 77 here in the bottom of the fifth. They played six more runs in the bottom of the fourth. This is up the right side, and the gloved backhanded by the first baseman. A nice play there to get the out. Fink does advance to third. So three and assisted on the out, and that'll bring up Sam Farrell, the left fielder. Did you get the left fielder an error? So far, Farrell has singled, been hit by a pitch, and walked. And he takes strike one there. He has scored two runs. Line up and the pitch. Down low. One and one. So it's one out, runner on third, four post 77. Who has a 10 nothing lead. Set to deliver. Down low. Post 77 has had quite the season so far. Started off with a 13-1 win over Newton. We had that game for you. Then a couple of road wins over Natick and North Chelmsford. And they both, both of those wins were very comfortable victories. You mean the other teams got slotted? Is that what comfortable means? <laughs> Essentially. Oh. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. Farrell not happy with himself there. Sam Farrell was a junior this year at Holliston. Do have warm up action for post 77. They're just practicing. Ah. I don't think a Malfi will come in. I don't think so. I think but he it, might be getting ready for uh, Waltham tomorrow. It is a walk to Farrell. Runners on the corners with one out. Brendan Grover will step in. Well, Farrell did get the green light in the first inning when Grover was up. That is up the right side, right to the first baseman. Steps on first for one throw to second, and he got him. That'll end the inning. 
A pretty good double play there. A three to four double play to wrap up the bottom of the fifth. To the top of the six we go. It's Ashland a leading Lowell 10 to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the sixth inning, a 10 0 lead for post 77. Dom Cavanaugh remains out there. I'd imagine he's going to try to complete the game as long as he doesn't run into any struggles. Due up for post 87 is 6, 7, and 8, but it looks like right off the bat we are going to have a pinch hitter for Lowell. Zach Gishier is going to step in to pinch hit for the DH, Brendan DeMarco. So I think at this point, Lowell might uh, empty their bench a little bit, get some guys some experience. Waving the white flag, in other words, is what you're trying to say? Oh, I won't <laughs> go that far. Matt Tomaselli warming up in the bullpen for Ashland. There's a strike. Oh, and one. There's another strike. Oh, and two. Tomaselli's heading to uh, UMass Amherst to be a minute man. Best dining hall in the country. If you say so. One and two. One and two between them and Bowden. I think Larry's just hungry. <laughs> that Chinese food smelling real good <laughs> from here. Right? Yeah, Larry's always hungry. I was telling Steve I had a hot dog and some cheese puffs <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> glad, glad to see you're on that diet. <laughs> And this is going to trickle up the left side, picked up by Fink, throw to first, and it's an out. Five to three, four out number one. Nice throw over by Fink. He had all day to do it, but he triple clutch it. Steve, what do you think? Uh, may have caught it a little awkwardly in there. I'll bring up Aiden Foyle. You know, it's about a 40.2 mile ride back to Lowell. Inside, one and oh. Dom's clearly not happy with himself, uh, with his pitch location, especially when he's riding that fastball inside, like that one, two in a row. Two and oh now on Foyle. Foyle's reached on a force out and flown out so far today. Down low. General Manager Rich Powell's got to be happy with his club. Ball four. Well, that was a four pitch walk to foil. One out, one on. JJ Mercury set to step in. It's a great baseball name, Steve, right? J.J. Mercury? That's right. <laughs> I saw that in the opening lineup, so I said I got to... Got to work that in, right? Got to work that in, again. Wind up and the pitch. Inside. The 1-0. Down low, gets by Jewett, and easily advancing his foil. Two and oh. Well, you wonder what the leash will be with Kavanaugh. They do have a couple other guys ready to come in. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the right side. That'll get into right field. And now rounding third is Foyle. And he will come around to try to score the throw home. Is not in time. 10 to 1. An RBI single for Mercury. And boy, was that throw close. Calabrese charged that ball. He might have had a chance. That might be it for Kavanaugh. Is Coach Obed going to... Head out there to take the ball, and that will indeed do it for Dom Cavanaugh. He pitched a great game today. All right. 
but he will come out after five and a third. It's a 10 to one lead for post 77. We'll take a timeout. You're tuned in Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HKM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Halston. New pitcher for post 77, Matt Tomaselli takes over for Dom Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh went five and a third, struck out a pair. Walked two, hit three batters, and gave up a run. Overall, pretty solid start for Kavanaugh. Matt Tomaselli takes over, and he's set to face Pat Crowley. A run is in for Lowell, swing strike there. One out, one on. Wind up in the pitch, swing and a miss. Uh, Malfi's pitching, excuse me. That's what I saw. I saw the, uh, Thanks a lot, Larry. No, uh, Tomaselli's playing first base. Tomaselli. Tomaselli Tom over at first base. Amalfi is the pitcher. Note to self, don't listen to Larry ever. One and two. Runner with a slight lead over at first. Amalfi started the game at first, now taking over on the mound for Kavanaugh. He was warming up between the innings. He was one of the pitchers that was ready to go today. Just outside, says the home plate umpire. Two and two. If he looks at first and is set to deal. Down low. Now fill up the count. Alex Amalfi got locked up with Hoj Bdoj Devoj for Medway in a one loss one nothing loss in the playoffs this year. That was fouled away, count remains full. He was a tough hombre to face, Alex Amalfi. Certainly was. Get you some numbers on Amalfi during the high school season in just a moment as we'll give up a walk here. That'll put two on with one out. Edgar Velasquez, the center fielder, will step in. Well, game not over yet. Bull trying to rally here to get some momentum. And this is going to be hit up the middle, take an awkward hop, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, they'll get the out. Both runners did advance to second and third. Now a throw to third and the runner's back. A nice job by Fink fielding that throw from Tomaselli. It's certainly a risky throw there. Very risky and what a pick by Fink. So the runners advancing to second and third, but they do get Velasquez for the second out. And now Thomas Hassett will step in. Always ill-advised making that throw from first to third. Alex Amalfi pitched 46 and a third of an inning at Ashland High School this year. There's a pitch down low. He had a 0.91 ERA, six wins, one loss, and eight appearances. That's why they're paying them the big bucks next year. That's right. Wow, he's got to have those two pitches. They look really close. They certainly did. Two and O on Hassett. Game's out of hand. The umpire's a little hungry. Call strikes. Go home. <laughs> Situational umpiring. Yes. Down low. Three and O now. Open the window. Exactly, you gotta keep things moving. Umpires get paid to call strikes and outs. Exactly. There's a strike, three and one. Mulphy has not pitched in a game yet this season, four post 77. Boy, a .91 in high school, that's microscopic. For those wow. number of innings, close to 50 innings. I would imagine he's going to get some serious time on the rubber this season for post-77. 
if his college coach says so. That is true. And this is up the middle, past the dive of Horn on one run is in. Here comes another, and it's going to be a two RBI hit for Hassett, who is now going to advance to second as the throw got away from Jewett. And it's a 10 to three ball game, an RBI single for Hassett, who advances the second on the throw in. Good backup by Amalfi, fielding his position. Julia could be aggressive at trying to get that ball, but you see that cannon by Brandon Grover? Some serious smoke on that ball off up the line, though. That'll bring up Tyler Hoey. Hassett squared that ball up. Wide up in the pitch. Just up high. One and oh. Malfi set to deliver, looks at second and deals, and therefore a strike. One and one. And that is fouled off, one and two. Well, this post-87 lineup, they have a lot of returning players and certainly some good hitters in their lineup as well. Obviously, this game might be a little bit too far out of reach, but I'm sure uh, Lowell will be towards the top of the zone this year. Is that pitch just outside, two and two. Well, if he takes a long look at second and deals, and this is up the right side and foul. Malfi working from the stretch with a runner on second. Down low, that'll fill up the count. Two outs in the inning. Post 77 really hoping that Amalfi can get this final out here. And there it is. Strike three for out number three, but Lowell does plate three runs. It's a 10 to three ball game as we head to the bottom of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 10 to three lead for post 77. Jackson Horning will start things off. Three, four, and five do up as Horning gets a piece of this one over to center field and caught. One away. It'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Well, Lowell was able to plate three runs last inning. And they've cut the Ashland lead down to seven as that pitch is low. We get a pinch hitter? One and oh. And it looks like we do have a pinch hitter perhaps. Two and oh, I believe it is, I want to say it's Thomas Selly in there. That's right, Kavanaugh did come out of the game as the pitcher. So pinch hitter in there as this is hit in the air over to center field and it's caught so Matt Tomaselli flies out two away. That'll bring up Sean Jewett the catcher. Well Lowell will be down to their final three outs next inning. And that hit him. That is the second time this game Sean's been hit by a pitch. Alex Amalfi, who started the game as the first baseman and took over on the mound last inning, will step in. Well, there's been a couple of two out rallies for post 77, so see what they can get going here. Get the ball really hard to play. Anyway. Oh, and one. A pitch down low, one and one. Ryan
Ryan Callery out there for his second inning of work for post 87. This hit high in the air, left side, and caught for the third and final out of the bottom of the sixth to the top of the seventh we go. It's Ashland leading Lowell 10 to three on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning, Lowell post 87 down to their final three outs, trailing 10 to three. Alex Amalfi remains in the game for Ashland. It'll be his second inning of work. And he is set to face four, five, and six. Rory Velasquez, Johnny Donovan, and Brendan DeMarco, who was pinch hit for. So we may see another pinch hitter for him. But in any case, Rory Velasquez is ready to start things off. Post 77, trying to improve to four and O oh in zone five play. And they have just dominated their opponents in zone play so far this season. And they are set to take on Waltham tomorrow night over in Waltham. Waltham one and three on the season so far, that pitch down low. And then it's three away games for post 77, then a whole lot of home games in July. Starting on the 7th of July, or the 8th of July rather. There's a strike, two and one. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the left side. Hornung able to glove it, throw to first, not a problem. Six to three for out number one. Johnny Donovan will step in. So one away here in the seventh. Roll down to their final two outs. Wind up and the pitch. Up high, one and oh. Leg left and the pitch. Check swing, did he hold? No. Oh and two. Malfi deals, there's a strike. One and two. Surprised the umpire not telling Johnny to tuck in the jersey. Check swing, he didn't hold there, there it is. The catcher doesn't like the call, but that was clearly the right call, two away. Well, if he had his shirt tucked in, maybe that wouldn't have been the call. <laughs> Exactly. I was just thinking the same thing. But the future beacon has got them down uh, two outs. Did you know that was the mascot of uh, UMass Boston? I do now. UMass Boston Beacons. Zach Gishier steps in and takes strike one. Personally, I think that's one of the more horrible mascot names you could possibly have. I'm glad I you mean, sh I'm glad you sh shared your opinion about that with us. Well, I'm very honest. <laughs> I like the skidball thoroughbreds, though. I really like that. One and one count. Mulphy deals. Down low. Of course, with that one, it makes sense because they're in Saratoga. That's right. To the world famous Saratoga race course. That's right. Which opens uh, July 11th, a little over two weeks. Get your $2 ticket. It's actually seven now. This is up the right side. That'll get into right field. 2 out base hit for Gishier. That'll bring up Aiden Foil. What do you like in the first race on the 11th? <laughs> What's the trifecta? I'll go with the two, the three, and the nine horse. We're supposed to do our horse racing predictions between inning guys. Well, Steve's a, handy, Steve's a handicapper. <laughs> he likes Mr. Red in the first race. Fouled away. Do you know Mr. Ed could talk? <laughs> yes, I am ignoring you right now. <laughs> For those people my age, you know that Mr. Ed is the world's only talking horse. The 1 Slow roller on the grass, picked up, and the throw by Hornung is in time. Six to three for out number three. Another great defensive gem by Jackson Hornung. 
And Ashland post 77 is going to improve to 4-0 and on the season as they take down Lowell by a final score of 10 to 3. Impressive stuff once again by post 77 as they got the bats going in the fourth inning. Ended up uh, having five hits in that inning and scoring six runs. And they'll take the victory with ease over a very good Lowell team, 10 to three. Lowell now two and two on the season. Post 77, now four and zero. Oh. Steve, I would say it has been quite an impressive start for Ashland this season. And they just beat Lowell, who as we know, is a very good program, very consistently. Well, one of the best in the state. In fact, there was one Zone 4 manager who called them the premier team in Zone 5. Well, I think Ashton may have something to say about that. I think so. Because after this one, uh, well, I mean, these guys travel up to Lowell, what, July 11th. They swap the home dates. And, you know, if, if, if I was a betting man, which I am, I'll bet you'll probably see these two in July. So it might not be as lopsided as it was out there today, but very impressive win, a statement win here for post-77. It certainly was a statement win, and they are 4-0 and on the season. And that is just impressive stuff in Zone 5. Of course, a long way to go, but so far, things looking great for Ashland, 0-77. The final score for the final time. Ashland takes down Lowell by a final of 10-3. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partners, Larry Sacklad and Steve Watson, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.